Lord is so wonderful and so good. You know, we all grew up in America, most for the most part in the Western nations, most people, um, Western civilization, I should say, uh, for the most part, probably 95% of us that are on YouTube watching the videos and stuff, um, or maybe less than that, but anyway, we grew up in a society where we, we gotta get them back, you know, and don't tread on me, and this is really the whole mindset of the founding of America, is, you know, my way, and, and everything that I want, okay, but in the Bible, the, the gospel is that we are to come to the cross, okay, believe the gospel, repent of our sins, believe the gospel, and then we get saved, okay, we get born anew, we have a new nature, and that nature is the nature of Christ, that nature is the nature of the Holy One of Israel, okay, and we become partakers of the divine nature, at the moment that we're born anew from heaven, by the regeneration in the Holy Ghost, and the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit and the blood of the Lamb. Now, when that takes place, we receive that new nature, which is Christ, okay? It's brand new, it's pure, okay? But, but we have still in our mind, we have this thinking that is of the world and of the flesh. So when people wrong us after we're born anew, uh, at first, it's like we're, we find it easy to forgive. We, we, we say, oh, don't worry about that. You know, I forgive you, you know. But then, later on in our Christian walk, the mentality of the world creeps back in. This is why we constantly tell people, you know, we tell people, stay away from the media of the world and, and magazines and, and all the stuff of TV and everything because... It's programming the mind of the watcher, that's why they call it television programming, to, to have this mentality of not forgiving, not letting it go, okay? But as Christians, we have no right to hold on to any grudge, to hold on to bitterness, to hold on to unforgiveness against people who wrong us. We have no right to do that, none at all. We cannot have any of that bitterness in our heart. Because if, if you have bitterness, a root of bitterness building up in us will, will spoil the whole body. And this is part of the problem with the church today in the Western nations. But what the Lord wants you to understand today is your reaction. Your reaction. Reaction. Okay? Someone did an action to you that hurt you. Okay? And then you react. See? Your re reaction if it's not according to the scripture, if you're born anew, okay, if your reaction is not according to the scripture, then that reaction will hurt you more than what the person actually did to you, okay? And that's a fact. Jesus said, right here in Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 21, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how, long, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? See, Peter's got something in his mind here. He's thinking, I'm only going to forgive so-and-so so many times. And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Okay? Seventy. Seven is the number for perfection. Times seven. So people say, okay, 490 times. No! No. Okay. Seventy times seven means infinity, however many times. Okay, we have to walk with a forgiving heart. Hallelujah. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. That'd be like, we could say, he owed him a million dollars. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Hallelujah. The Lord's just speaking to me now. He was moved with compassion, see? 
See, when we're born anew, we receive that compassion, which is Jesus Christ within us. It's His compassion, okay? It's His forgiveness. Hallelujah. And we'll get there in just a second. Hallelujah. He had compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, owed him ten dollars. Now this guy owed ten million dollars, okay? Or a million dollars to the Lord. That's that's me, John Farrell, owing, or my wife Sharon, owing to the Lord all the debt for our sin, okay? And the Lord says, I forgive you your sin. I forgive you all your trespasses. I forgive everything. I remove it as far as the east is from the west. I remember it no more. Hallelujah. He says, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hallelujah. See, he's forgiven all. Hallelujah. But the same servant went out, that would be us in the story, and found one of his fellow servants. This is the... the this is when we have a wrong reaction, okay? Our reaction is wrong. Find one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Pay me all that thou owest. You're going to pay for what you did to me. See? That's what people do in the faith. They say they're Christians, but this is the attitude that we've been programmed with by the world. And Jesus says, No, no, no. We can't have this attitude. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. See, when we don't forgive, Jesus calls us a wicked servant. Oh, man. I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, unto me if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses so the Lord commands us to forgive our reaction okay is gonna if we have a bad reaction when people wrong us that's gonna hurt us more than if we just have the reaction of Christ which is to show mercy which means unmerited favor forgiveness yes you let the person know they wronged you but if they stay in their stubborn pride and, and don't receive the word you're giving them and you this is when you've been genuinely wrong okay then then you just have to pray for them but you still forgive from the heart because when you forgive people that wrong you you release the Lord to come in and to work in their life and bring conviction to them to draw them into the fold okay we have to remember this, you know. There's so many things happen in my own life, you know, from a child that people did to me, okay, wronging me. But when I, when I came back to the Lord in 94, the Lord had me write letters to people that, that I could not find, forgiving them, forgiving them, forgiving them. See, this is the attitude that we have to have, an attitude of mercy and forgiveness and love, compassion, just like the Lord Jesus and this will be our attitude and it doesn't matter what people do to you don't let what people do to you hold you bound okay and keep you filled and being all oh, angry and everything don't let that happen forgive see because if you don't forgive we're gonna be turned over to the tormentors and we don't want that and the father won't forgive us we must forgive there's great power in forgiveness. Great and awesome power. Because you know the Lord's forgiven us. He shed all of His blood for us. So we can forgive. And we do forgive all who have wronged us. In Jesus' name.